All right, so let's go ahead and get started. I'll get started with some housekeeping. So if you do have any questions for either Juan or myself, feel free to type your questions in the chat box as some of you have already started doing or in the Q&A box and I'll be checking that. And um, while Juan's face is kind of, he'll be facing the canvas to paint, but that's what I'm here for to ask those questions so that he can also have that conversation as we're painting. Um, you can either select all panelists to just have it uh, typed to type the questions just to me, or if you're okay with all the attendees seeing it, you can type it to all panelists and attendees as well. So NAMI, who are we and what do we do? For those of you who don't know who NAMI is or what we offer, our services, basically we're the largest mental health grassroots organization in the nation. We offer a range of education classes as well as support groups and presentations. And our whole goal and mission is to destigmatize mental health conditions and to help people find support and be able to reach out to others and talk about their mental health um, in a way that they feel respected and with dignity. And part of what we do is trying to build a whole community of people who are empathetic, who understand, who are there to support and encourage each other, especially when we're you know, going through hard times. And during these times, it's so important to be there for each other. So I just wanna thank you for all of your support for everyone who's here today with us. Um, I can definitely feel your love and your support through the screen. Um, and the reason why we're here today, I mean, we all follow Juan's art for a reason. He has a very special, me me uh, special message out there, which I'll let him talk about a bit um, as he's painting, as well as whether you're following NAMI, you found out about the event through us. Um, but we're here because we have this understanding and we want to be able to support those um, who are struggling or supporting others who are living with mental health conditions. So just really quick how I met Juan about, I think it was almost six, seven months ago, at the beginning of this year, Juan showed up to one of our volunteer orientations and um, reached out and said, hey, how can I help? I wanna be here. Your organization really aligns with the message of the art that I'm creating. And people are reaching out to me and I wanna learn how I can be there for people um, as they're reaching out to me about their struggles because their, his art speaks to everyone so much, the people who follow him. Um, and so that's why he's partnered up with us and we're so honored to have Juan on the board with us. So thank you so much for all that you do, Juan, especially for our community. Um, it's so important, as we've said earlier, to take that time out for self-care. And that's what we're here for today. I mean, with all the chaos and uncertainty that's going on in the world, um, how do we take that time out to just practice a bit of compassion, to do something that we enjoy despite whatever's going on around us? So without further ado, I'll go ahead and pass it over to Juan um, to introduce himself and to kind of let us know what we're drawing or painting today. So everyone's curious to know. Yeah, uh, thanks, Trin. You know, thank you so much. Like, as she mentioned, I I wanted to be able to do this along with, along with NAMI just because we had a lot of plans going into this year of doing more community events, more community outreach events, and just reaching out to the public on something that's so important to all of us, which is mental health, and trying to get the message out there and, you know, try to end the stigma and just normalize it. You know, mental health is as important as physical health and it's something that we all should you should speak about. And it's something that I constantly talk about through my art um, from the very beginning when I started creating it. And partnering with NAMI just made it a lot more special to be able to have the resources uh, to help out people and to you know give families and friends the, the ability and the tools to either help themselves or help a family member or friend. And you know, I wanted to do something in order to, you know, to bring us all together, especially as, uh, as Trin mentioned during these, these, these troubled times that um, everything seems to be so bleak, you know, looking at, you know, at the news, at the social media, and I wanted to be able to just take some time and, um, and do something that would be fun, would be positive, that would bring the family together, and just create art that will help speak and spread the message on, on mental health. So as we mentioned, I mean, we're going to be doing a piece um, that kind of signifies that that message of we may not all be perfect. You know, we may not have everything that's you know perfect in our lives, but we are all special in that way. That the imperfections is what makes things beautiful. You know, and taking that message and realizing that we don't have to be perfect all the time. It's okay to not be okay all the time, and we are going to be working on on a piece that. Um, 
to me signifies uh, just that message. Um, it's going to be a heart. Uh, I use hearts a lot in a lot of my work and it doesn't automatically represent like romantic love. To me, heart means a passion, a love, whether it's for our family, for our friends, for ourselves. And um, as I'm going along with the painting, we're, we're going to be explaining more of what the actual piece uh, represents and like signifies. So a lot of, I know a lot of you guys picked up uh, the kits. Uh, thanks to NAMI, uh, the providing them for everybody. We have, I want to, so I'm going to go over that right now. Uh, just the specific different things that we have. Um, as you know, we got the, the basic colors, which, you know, the primary colors, we're not going to get too crazy. It's just going to be just a fun piece. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's more about the message that we're trying to convey with it. Um, you know, we have the red, blue, and yellow. We have black and white. So these are the paints we're going to be using on the acrylics. Uh, we have the three different brushes that were provided as well, which is the sponge brush uh, for filling up the big areas, mostly like the background and stuff like that. And then we have the flat one just to fill in, you know, more of the details. And then we have the, the smaller one, which is, you know, your lining brush. So that's going to be the main ones that we're going to be using as well. Um, some things that weren't provided that we'll give you guys a couple of minutes to get, um, whether you want to pour your paints into uh, paper plates or whatever, or even like disposable cups, I suggest you get one cup, fill it up with water, um, just so you get able to put the brushes in there and you know clean the brushes up. And like I said, you guys use paper plates or whatever you want to use to pour your paints. There's not gonna be a whole lot of like mixing colors, but there's gonna be just a tiny little bit. Uh, and then the other thing that will come in really helpful, paper towels. So if you guys want to get those together. Uh, my canvas is a lot bigger than your guys's. Most of them that were provided were eight by tens, um, which are perfect for what we're going to do. I just wanted to do a little bit bigger of a canvas in order for, you know, you guys to see it better. And again, if you guys have any questions, regardless of it be the art or any messages that you have, um, you know, please feel free to ask them. I'm going to be going back and forward. Uh, Trin's going to be basically asking questions and she's, and if you guys have any questions, she'll ask them towards me and we'll just jump in and have some fun and we're about to get started. So if you guys um, want to start getting ready, basically the first thing we're going to be doing is, is sketching. It's going to be a really rough sketch. So you get the smallest brush that you have and we're going to pick the lightest color that we have, which would probably be, you know, yellow and just pour it a little, you know, pour some of it. You don't have to pour all of it into the cup. So just getting started, just enough to, so you could sketch, so not a lot. So we're going to do a heart and it's not going to be your, 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 it's going to be a cartoony heart. So it's going to be pretty simple. You guys can follow along and we're just going to do it in the center of the canvas. And it's, this is just a rough sketch, so it doesn't have to be perfect. So, you know, if you guys can see it, okay. I think you So, and it's just to get the idea of where the shape is for the heart. You see, yeah, so you guys can kind of see it right there. And just the idea of, you know, kind of like a backwards C, just kind of big right there. And then starting from this side over here, a little bit into it, just bringing it along and you're just gonna make a heart. Pretty basic, simple heart. You know, if you do that, this little swoop right here in the bottom with a little point, it just gives it a little bit, just more of a feel of, you know, a little cartoony heart. So pretty much that basic, that simple. And it's just, like I said, we're just doing that just so we can get the shape of it. it doesn't have to be perfect, it doesn't have to be super pretty. It's just, you know, it's just there. We're gonna be filling it up with color anyway, so it doesn't matter. Um, so at this point, you know, and if you guys want me to slow down at any point, you know, feel free. So right now we're going to go to our next color. And this is where we're going to do a, just a little bit, a little bit of, uh, of mixing, of mixing colors. So best thing you guys can, when you guys have your, your water cup, just pour a little bit, almost like a little shot, like just that much water, not a lot, you know. And we're going to be pouring in some white paint. And as you can see, I'm going to show you not a lot of paint, just, just a little bit. 
the background is going to be more of like a, a watercolory kind of effect. So, you know, you pour a little bit of white paint, not a lot, and you take your blue and you pour even less. So just a few drops of blue. Not a lot. And then once you have that in your cup or in your paper plate, you're gonna take your sponge brush, a little soft one, and just mix it all up. You're gonna get a very nice, like just pretty little light blue and just mix it up, as you can see. So yeah, so not a lot of paint, you know, it mixes in with the water pretty well. So and you're gonna take your sponge brush and you're literally gonna fill up the entire area except for the heart. So we're gonna leave this open, just fill up around it. It doesn't, you could go in any direction that you want. I'll move my little guy away. And just literally just. Just fill up the background. That way with the water as well, because, and if you don't like try to clean it up a little bit so it's not dripping so much paint and uh, just fill it in. The water would actually allow it to dry it faster. So you don't have to worry about that. You go in any direction that you want, honestly. And it just gives it that soft little blue. Um, Cause it's basically, we're gonna be doing this heart almost floating and like in the sky, we're gonna be doing some, some clouds to go along with it. And the idea is it is, you know, this heart's gonna be, it's not gonna be a perfect heart. It's gonna, you know, it's gonna have cracks. It's gonna, it's gonna have some damages. It's gonna have, you know, a little bit of, of a broken heart, but not completely destroyed because, you know, we all go through things in life. And sometimes, you know, we come out with scars, we come out with, with pain. And, and it's just, uh, to me, it's, it's, it's just remembering all the stuff that we've gone through. I mean, we're here today, we've survived everything we've gone through so far. So it's the idea of like, again, nothing is perfect. So putting this heart in right in the center, doing it the way we're gonna do it. It just allows us to, to be able to share our story that's like, you know, we've gone through so much in our lives. In this year alone, so many of us have gone through so much that the strength that we have because of it just makes us even better and stronger. So, like I said, fill up your background, it's a light blue. It's going to be a little wet for a little bit, but it'll dry up pretty fast. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. As you can see, it kind of already, because of the watercolor feel, it almost, it almost feels like a sky as it is. And then we're going to go in there and actually add some more clouds, and that's going to make it look a lot better. So Juan, as we're filling in our backgrounds, I just had a quick poll I wanted to send out to everyone just to get it feel what our, who our audience is. Um, a couple of questions on there. One is the age of the participants. So if there's a family in there, you can mul um, choose multiple answers just so we have an idea of, um, you know, like I said, our audience and just what roles you identify with, um, with about five options for that as well. Whether you're a family member or peer, mental health advocate, provider, you're just here for one. <laughs> um, that should be multiple choice as well. We'll kind of leave that up there as we're filling in the background. Again, if you guys have any questions, always um, feel free to ask. Trina will pass them on to me if I don't turn around and look at it. But um, yeah, so well, one, you pretty much yeah. have the background, so. Oh, sorry, how'd you get into your, uh, into art in the first place? Uh, honestly, it was, uh, since I was a kid, I, I, I actually was born in Mexico and I was raised, um, uh, watching Saturday morning cartoons. And when I was in Mexico, I actually learned how to speak English watching Saturday morning cartoons. So going along and reciting the scripts and, and the theme songs of cartoons like DuckTales and like Tailspin and all that stuff, um, I just wanted to draw the characters. So eventually I just started tracing them and... And it, be, it became my, my go-to. I was the youngest in my family and I was able to, you know, my, my siblings didn't really want to play with me. So my cartoons were, you know, just kind of my, my gateway. And eventually that was, it became my journal and how I, I share my feelings and my emotions through cartoon characters. And um, my goal in life was always to create my own and eventually have my own like cartoon series or movie or stuff like that. So it, it was always 
uh, my best friend and my go-to every single time. And when I felt alone, it was, it was always there for me. I didn't have to wait for somebody to join me. I could always just jump on a canvas or a drawing and just, you know, get my feelings and my emotions out. You know, it was, and it's still the same way to this day. Right. So real quick, uh, once you guys have the background done uh, with that first coat, we're going to put, take the blue and do a little bit more and just do it a little darker. Just so we could have just you know just make it pop a little more so put that in there mix it up so it with water and everything and just a little bit of a darker blue and we're gonna go you know get the excess water off of it and we're gonna go towards the bottom so we're gonna start in the bottom right here and we're just gonna start doing the darker blue and we're gonna go side to side Just it's a little bit darker in the bottom. A little bit darker than on the top. Yeah. There we go. You can see it like right there, just just a little darker right here than it is on the bottom. To me, painting has always been um, after I learned how to paint, I kind of taught myself, it became almost a step by step on where to start first and where to next. And the, the way that I've developed it, it actually allows me to paint a lot faster. So normally what would take some people a painting to do, you know, eight, 10 hours, I could probably do in two or three, just because I've, I've broke it down to, to the steps on how to fill up and maximize your time with it. So as you can see, we have the background down this is a little bit darker. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the blue and put a lot more into it. Now we're gonna make it really dark, like a really dark blue. So we'll take that. And now we're gonna have fun because now we get really Bob Ross with it and we're gonna paint happy little clouds. So get the excess paint off of it. And then again, nothing has to be perfect. You know, it's, it's more of just the story and message behind it. And the reason why I created this dark in the bottom and more light in the top, it just kind of represents the, the things and the struggles that we've gone through in the past, you know, and where we are at this moment and where we want to be, you know, the, the happiness and the peacefulness and the self-love and the light always coming and shining from the top, knowing that we rose above this and we were able to overcome whatever we were going through, whatever feelings, emotions, or depression, or anxiety. So still with the sponge brush and taking the blue and making it really, really dark. The, way, the best way that I do clouds, like I'll do the first one here, it's like, it's just circles at this point, like little circles, doesn't have to be perfect. And then you do another little circle right here and then you kind of stretch it out like that. And then you do it on that way too. So again, doesn't have to be perfect. Another little circle right here another circle to the left, to the right, and then you do the line right here. And now you have a cloud. So another thing that I've learned in the many, many years of doing art is that visually, odd numbers are always better than, than even numbers. They just visually, they, they're more attractive. When you do something that's even numbers, so if you do an even number of clouds, it looks kind of stagnant and boring. When you do, um, odd numbers where it'd be three or five it actually stands out a lot more and just visually it's more appealing um so again another little circle up here little circle to the to the right little circle to the left and then you do a line doesn't have to be perfect but now you have you know now you have these clouds right there and if you want you could go back to the bottom and make it a little bit darker just to have fun with it just because it's, just give it that little bit more of depth. Um, so now that you have pretty much the background done, I suggest uh, taking paper towels and cleaning up your brush as much as possible. Um, best way to do it, a lot of people will dip it in the water and then clean it up. The way that I've learned is the fastest way to clean up a brush, clean it up on the paper towel first, then dip it in the water like so. 
and just clean it up as much as you can. Get the excess water off of it, clean it up with your paper towels. And then you have pretty much a decent clean brush. And now we're gonna go on to the next, uh, the next color, which is going to be filling up the red for the heart. Let's see, so we're gonna take paper cup or you know paper plate, whatever you have, or you just kind of pour the red in there. And again, with your British sponge brush, just get it in there, get all as much paint as you can on it, push it down just so it fills it up as much as you can. And we're gonna go and we're gonna start filling in the heart. Best way to do it, um, you're gonna take the sponge and you're just gonna go in out like on the inside of the or outline like that. You're just gonna outline the whole thing like as best as you can all the way around. So you outline your heart. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect as you can see. And then, and the best way to do it is with your brush, since it's kind of like flat on the side like this, when you go around, make sure you turn it. That way you don't get a super fat line because you're just doing this to fill up the edges. That way it's a lot easier to go in and fill it in once you have the edges painted. So you have your heart right there, pretty simple. And then you just go in and fill it in. So just quick on our poll, I'm gonna go ahead and end the poll and just share the results just so we have an idea of who we have here with us. And it looks like you have a pretty wide range of all ages and people who identify with mental health in all different um, sorts of capacities. So that's really great to see that that diverse crowd that we have here today. I think that's great, especially because, you know, you know, having kids and, you know, having adults, you know, as you mentioned from one to 10 to 71 to hundred, mental health affects every single one of us, you know, in many, in many different ways. And uh, we spoke about this a lot, me and Trin of, you know, it's, it's amazing when we can start talking to our kids and sharing the, the message on how to have, positivity and how to deal with their mental health. I mean, we focus so much on teaching them about our physical health, brushing their teeth, taking care of them, eating healthy. But something that like tends to get a little bit ignored in society is, is mental health. And it goes hand in hand as it's, it's just as important as physical health. So it, being able to talk about this with our kids and sharing that message and that story with them and letting them know that it's it's okay to, to feel certain things. Um, and starting them early is probably the best bet in order to to end the stigma and to just normalize mental health let's continue just get the the most important part at this point just get it filled in as much as possible don't put a you don't have to put a lot of paint on it because if anything you could always come back and do another coat it's better to just layer it little by little than having a lot of paint all at once and then it's gonna take forever for it to dry. Because as you can see, uh, a lot of the blue is a lot is drying already, so. so. Well, Juan, I know you've been really open about your own mental health struggles. How are you coping right now during this whole COVID thing? You know, it's, um, it's been a, you know, it's, it's been definitely a, a, an interesting time to say the least. I know it's, it's been a lot of ups and downs. Uh, a lot of plans got canceled. <laughs> um, but the, and it took a little bit, it took a little bit to get just the, just the hold of things and really evaluate what's going on. And I decided that I could either let it affect me in, in a negative way, or I could take this time and do the best that I can with it. Whether it was learning something new or spending time with my family, spending time with my kids, um, and just looking at, at the positive side of things. And I know it, it might sound a little cheesy, but at the end of the day, what I've learned from this whole situation is not taking anything for granted. You know, it's like, and spending time with, with my loved ones and appreciating what we have. Because at the end of the day, 
knowing that my my mental health goes hand in hand with how I react to things and how I feel about things. And sometimes I feel lost and, and just alone. But when I really start taking inventory of the great things that I have in my life and the things that, uh, you know, that make me happy, I realize that it goes down to the core of things of, you know, just having my friends and having my family and allowing me to continue to, to go for after the things that I, that I've been, you know, that I feel like I, I haven't been spending too much time on and, just focusing on what's really, really, really important in my life. And when I started doing that, it actually helped me a lot. And um, it allowed me to, to open my eyes out to, to what's really important, as I said. And I still don't get to paint as much as I, as I can and as I'd want to. So I'm actually happy that we're doing this today. Um, as you can see, the heart's pretty much uh, full at this point. Once you have it colored in, you know, just smooth it out. And the best thing to do, um, a little bit more of an advanced tip when it comes to painting, uh, once you have the paint on there, if you could imagine the heart of how it's shaped, of how it's round, instead of doing straight lines to fill in, kind of go with the curve of the actual painting. It makes a little bit of a difference, but that little bit just gives it that extra, just like nice look to it, so. And see, we have the heart right there. Um, so now that we have the heart, we're gonna let that dry for a little bit. And we're gonna go back and we're going to, let's see, we'll take the, the yellow that we sketched with, and we're gonna take our flat brush, the one that was in the kit as well. And we're gonna fill it up with paint as much as you can. So once you fill it up with paint, and this is what I, you know, when I teach classes about painting, you're gonna have a bunch of paint on your brush. So whether it's on your paper towel or on your paper plate, you know, just kind of like wipe it off a little bit, like not all the paint, but just so it's not all gunked in there. And now you're gonna have just a good amount of paint. So what we're gonna do next, once you have the red in there, we're gonna re-outline the entire thing. So we're gonna do go around the heart, just the shape of the heart, and we're gonna just have this like yellow outline. It doesn't have to touch the heart. It's actually even better if you stay away a little bit, maybe like a quarter inch away from the heart and you just kind of like do this yellow around it. And I'll, you will see why later on after we get done. So when I usually paint, I get the colors locked in, like the biggest colors first, but fill up the biggest area and then go from big to small. So the outline and all that stuff is gonna go in at the end. The highlights is, goes on at the very, very end. If you've seen my style of art, it's very cartoony, it's very bright, it's very poppy, um, but it always pretty much has white highlights on it. I just like that look of it. It's uh, very traditional to, uh, to cartooning, uh, what I grew up with, so. So we're gonna do, again, we're gonna go around the heart with the yellow. Don't, you don't need to touch the heart. You just kind of go around it. Doesn't have to be perfect again, but you'll see why it doesn't touch the heart. So we go around this way. It doesn't matter if you touch the cloud or anything, just kind of like get in there. And it doesn't have to be perfect again. You know, this is something that you guys could, could you know, if you just take and do it on your on your own whenever you, you feel like it, but it's like, it's the idea of just taking that time to, to create something just because you wanna express how you feel. It doesn't have to make sense to anybody as long as it makes sense to you. Um, I think that's one of the, the biggest things about mental health is a lot of people tend to keep it quiet or keep it to themselves because they don't, a want to bother anybody with it or they don't think they understand uh, anybody would understand and sometimes it's hard for even us to understand and as we're going through it so the best advice that i've always given people at least that works for myself is you know sharing your story because sometimes it's just the the actual activity of saying the words out loud it's, it's very helpful to myself um so now that we have that let's see so we get the yellow Done. You're so right, Juan. I feel like the more that I've opened up to people about either my own personal mental health struggles or my families and what we've experienced, the more people actually come out and say, yeah, that's, that's actually happened to me too, or I'm going through that. 
And I think that's a big part of our mission as an organization. And what we're here to do is just to give people the space to say it's okay to not be okay, right? Yeah, and it's, um, as, I, as I mentioned before, as I, and I use this a lot when I tell people, it's um, in order for, pe- for your loved ones and your friends and your kids to open up to you, it, it's really important that you let them know that you are willing to open up to them. You know, and I've, I've mentioned this to you and I've mentioned this to many people. It's, it's almost like going to a bank. You could only take out the money in the bank that you've deposited in the bank. So if you haven't put in anything in, you're not going to get anything out. So I know with my kids, in order for me, you know, having a 13 year old and having a seven year old and I want them to open up to me, I can't be completely closed off to them. You know, I have to let them know that it's okay to share your feelings and your emotions and you shouldn't, you know, be scared to, to, to share them with, with my, with me or with each other and voice in them because it's important to get it, you know, get it out there because the more that you, you keep it in your head, the more that you keep it buried, it almost becomes like a boogeyman and it becomes bigger and bigger um, in your own head, you know, so sharing those feelings and, as a person that if you're willing and wanting to help uh, your family members, one of the things that I've learned that helps me a lot is just listening because sometimes that's all we need. Uh, Sometimes we don't want to hear you should do this or you should try that. You know, we just want somebody to share our emotions and our feelings with, without any fear of like the stigma that comes behind it. Um, So now that we have pretty much the outline, we have the heart, we have uh, the background. We're going to start getting a little bit fancier. So we're going to take the yellow that we got. We're going to pour it in there. Not a lot, just a little bit. And then we're going to take the red and just pour a little, like a quarter of what you just poured for the yellow. So just a few drops, not a lot. And then we'll take that. And you don't even need to wash your brush on this one. So the yellow one that you're using, just go in there and mix it up. So you're going to get, you're basically going to get an orange. So once you have the, the orange mixed in there, mix it on really, really well. So it becomes an, an actual orange color. So once you have your, your orange, you know, wipe it off a little bit, the excess paint off your brush. And we're going to go up here. So right here in this area because the the light source is technically coming from up top so your darkest points on your heart is going to be on this bottom the lightest point is going to be on top so we're going to take the orange we're not going to do a lot we're literally as you remember that like right here and just kind of do orange just a little bit and again it's it's more of a just a a highlight just because it's lighter on the inside and it's not gonna like pop like a lot it's but those little tiny just details just kind of make it at the very end just make it look like special and less boring than just a flat solid like red heart so you kind of just put that in there just blend it in as you can see, kind of see it just, just a little bit. And then on this side as well, just get your, your highlight right here. And we're gonna put more highlight on, uh, highlight on it later. Um, but for now, it's just, that's pretty much all we need. Not a whole lot. So once you have that, we're gonna do the opposite side. But now we're gonna use the black. And this one you have to be extremely careful because you don't want to do way too much black on it. So instead of pouring it into our, our mixture, we're actually going to take our brush, the, the one we were just using, get the excess paint off of it, and we're going to dip it in the black. That's it. So as you can see, it just literally took it and just dip it in the black. And then you mix that up. So you mix that up and you're going to get a darker tone. Okay, so then we're going to take some red and then pour that on there. And what it is, is you're basically gonna get a darker, like almost like a brown kind of red. And you mix that up with the black and the orange and you kind of get like this darker, darker red. And that's gonna be here in the bottom. So on this bottom corner right here, we're basically gonna start doing that. Again, it's not a lot. It's just enough to where you could tell there's a shadow right here in the bottom. So 
if you can't see it that well on the camera, I'll add more, more black on it for me, just so you guys can see it better. <laughs> just mix it up. It's more of a brown. Juan, you mentioned you have a couple of girls. Um, how are they dealing with everything that's going on and what, what have you been able to discuss with them about or what do you tell them when they ask? If you know, we're definitely not a fan of everything that was going on because we had, you know, we had vacations, we had trips, everything kind of started right before school ended. So summer kind of went out the window and, um, you know, they started seeing things, whether it be like on the news and television that, you know, it was a scary time. And I remember at one point it became so much that I needed to unplug and I needed to unplug the news and plug all the stuff and just spend time together. And like for us, it was just focusing on spending time together, but we started fo like watching more, more things that made us happy. You know, we, we literally started watching like Mr. Rogers. We started watching Sesame street and from that on, like we were literally sitting there and you, we were realizing that these, these simple, pure lessons that, you know, these shows taught us is something that we all kind of need nowadays. You know, it's not taking things for granted and loving each other and having empathy and respect for each other. It seemed like it was such an important thing and a message that I needed to share with them and allowing them to express how they felt, you know, their frustration uh, for everything that was going on, you know, birthdays got canceled, trips got canceled. Um, you know, our, my niece, unfortunately passed away earlier this year. So it, it was tough uh, for a while there, but I came to the conclusion that being completely open and honest with them and just speaking about what I was going through allowed them to open up and, uh, it allowed a lot more time for us to actually spend time together and, you know, playing games and reading and just having fun and um, realizing that we didn't need to go on trips and vacations to, to spend together uh, time as a family. So a, a lot of crafts, a lot of crafts, a lot of reading uh, with me and the kids and spending time together, a lot of building forts. So just making it fun for them. And it was fun for me too, because it just took me back to the, to my summer days when I wasn't really doing anything uh, and it's just having fun. So as you can see, we have that little bit of a, you know, the dark part on the bottom, a little bit of a light in the top. So um, right now we're gonna jump in and we're gonna get on the last few things, which is gonna be like the outline and um, the highlights and some of the shadows. Again, if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. Um, let's see. So now we're going to get the littlest brush that came with the kit and we're going to do the black. So in this one, um, we will need a little bit of um, just patience because, you know, it's the outline. The black is going to stand out and pop the most. Um, one of the secrets that I've learned after a while of painting is once we do lines, you could either kind of sketch the line, it works either way, or you could try to do a solid line. Uh, when you're doing a solid, a solid line, and you can take it little bit by little bit, um, when you do, like that works as well, if you wanna do a big solid line and try to go the whole way, this is the best advice that I can give people when they're doing outlines. Look at where you are, and then when you start moving your brush, don't look at where your brush is, look at it where it's gonna go. And always keep your, your eye. So if like my brush is right here for the outline, my eye is over here. So the brush will always follow where my eye is. So I always kind of try to stay ahead. Another thing that helps me that I don't know if it might help you or not is I, for a few seconds, I tend to hold my breath while I'm doing an outline. Just because when you're doing an outline and like, uh, I'll show you this way. So when you're doing an outline and you go like that, that's fine, I held my breath for that. But if you're doing an outline and you breathe, you'll do this, you're like, it'll kind of move with you. So if you hold your, your, your breath just for a few seconds while you do that line, you, it's most likely that you'll get a straighter line. So right now we're gonna do the outline. Um, 
So let's start right here, so. I love it. Jamie said, like putting on eyeliner. <laughs> and she's absolutely right. <laughs> <laughs> thinking that the whole time I was like man this is like makeup <laughs> it is and the fact that no girl ever in my life has allowed me to put makeup on them kind of makes me sad <laughs> uh, so we're, let's start right here just because it makes it easier and so we're going to go and we're going to do the outline and as you can see it really pops so just follow the heart right there so you have the first part of the outline and then if you start up here on this side of the heart, it makes it easier. And remember Juan said at the beginning that this is not a perfect heart. <laughs> the whole point of this heart is that it's not perfect. You know, because nothing is perfect. And beauty, the truth is, beauty is in the imperfections. You know, if, if you see something that's just so perfect, it almost becomes stagnant and kind of boring. It's just, it looks kind of just the plain sticker. You know, it doesn't have that, that je ne sais quoi, I don't know what that means, but still. Um, so right here, we're gonna do the little wispy part in the middle and just like that. So that kind of gives you the heart, a crease in the middle of the heart. So Melanie said, you can totally do my makeup. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, tell me, I'll take people up on that. So we're gonna outline the whole thing. See. You know, Juan, I really liked what you said earlier about, you know, counting your blessings and just finding things to be grateful for, like spending time with family and making the best of what's currently going on right now. I mean, because we're all kind of stuck right now. So we could, we, we have to make that choice. We could either choose to, to feel a certain, and it's, and like I said, it is, it is hard sometimes, especially when you're struggling, where you're going through so much. But even if there's a hundred things wrong and two things that to be grateful for, hold on to those two things because at the end of the day, those are the things that matter. You know? So we have the outline basically done right there. So here's the fun part. Um, now we're gonna do what I call the fat outline on the outside. And this is what makes everything pop. In cartoons, you see it a lot. Um, and I had to learn it literally from just watching cartoons. I'm like, why does that stand out more than just my drawing? And I realized, oh, there's an outer outline that's kind of like the perimeter outline. And that one we're going to do from the black all the way to the beginning of that first yellow outline that we did around the heart. So we're going to go around and we're going to fill up that entire area between the heart and the yellow outline. We're going to fill it up black. And that's what's going to make this really, really pop. While everyone's doing this, you know, we could take a few moments to just think of three things that we're grateful for today. Um, that's definitely something that I have next to my mirror where there's an actual question I printed out that says, what are you grateful for? What are three things that you're grateful for today? And to say them out loud. And that's a practice that I try to have every day. Yeah, I take a lot of my cues from Mr. Rogers. And like, if you've seen like the, the any of the, the, the Mr. Rogers movies or the shows, it's like he actually likes silence. And a lot of people, silence makes it awkward for them. He loved it because it allowed you to not focus on the distractions of everything and really focus on what's important. And a lot of people were actually thrown off by him because he was, you know, he would love to, to have those moments of silence to where he's like, you know, take, take a minute and think of those people that make a difference in your life. Like really think about it and think about them. And that's it. And doing it for a minute, like it's such a peaceful experience. Um, I know that every morning, the way that I kind of deal with everything that's going on, I, I meditate, you know, and I don't know how to, like, I'm the kind of person, I'm like, I don't know how to meditate. And it's something that I had to learn. And it's, it's, it's constantly, I'm still learning, but what it is, it's, my mind goes a hundred miles an hour and it's hard, but just taking that time to try to decompress before I start my day really, really helps me. Yes, I would agree. That's that's kind of what I try to put in my practice daily also. It's not always perfect, but I notice the difference when I start my day with a 20 or 30 minute meditation versus when I don't have time to do that. And what helps me a lot too is that there is guided meditations on like YouTube. So it's like, even if you 
can't sit there in silence or whatever. There's guided meditations that are like, you know, manifestation, stuff like that. And it, it helps you. And you just kind of like turn off the whole world and just tune in, put headphones on or whatever. And it's, it's really peaceful, you know, and with our, the way that the world is today, it's kind of nice to, to slow down and just take a breath. Um, so as you can see, like now the heart's really like starting to pop just because of the outline. The black always makes it pop really, really well. I love that Kelly says she's grateful for her family, her health, and indoor plumbing. You have no idea. I spent a year in India, and not every place has the best plumbing. So <laughs> there's little things that we take air for granted. Air conditioning. Yes, air conditioning. Um, but it could also be things like having our health, our eyesight, being yeah. able to get up and move in the morning or, you know, because not... Not like, have you ever had a just a small pain, whether it be on your toe or your tooth? And it's like that little tiny thing could just ruin your entire day. It's like, and I, I know at those moments I'm thinking to myself, it's like, man, I'm grateful when this is gone. Just anything and everything could be, could affect you in such a way that it's like, you kind of have to be grateful for the things that, that you do have. So now that we have the heart, we're going to go in there. We're going to have a little fun with it. Um, again, I want to keep this on this bottom half because kind of this kind of represents the darkness and the stuff that we've gone through. So take a little bit of the black and just do a couple of little cracks in the heart, you know, just little wispy lines, little crooked lines, almost think of it like the way like lightning works where it just kind of like spreads out kind of like that. And a lot of people will look at this and like, Oh, that's depressed. You know, the heart's broken or the heart's hurt. I'm like, yeah, but, we all are, we all get hurt, we all get broken, but at the end of the day, like we're still here, we're still going, you know? So see that it's 12.50, so we're getting, we're closer to the end right now, I promise. Um, right now, the last few things we're gonna do on this piece in particular, and you could play around with it. Um, after we're done, you could add more stuff if you'd like. Uh, while I do, while I move on to the highlights, Trin, do you wanna share the, the whole contest thing with them? Oh, yeah. And then also we had someone who asked, do we leave a little yellow? Yeah, you can leave a little yellow just because it just gives it a little bit of a glow around the heart and just, uh, just a little bit of, you know, of a, of a break between the black and, and the blue. And it just it gives it that little bit of almost like an aura kind of feel to it. Yeah. And before you jump in, sorry, before you jump into the next color, make sure you wash it really, really well because we're going to be using white and you don't want to muddy the white. So make sure you wash it, rinse it off really, really well on your, in your cup of water. Yeah, so about the contest, if you would like to submit your artwork for a contest, um, there'll be a link that we'll put up on our Facebook page, as well as we'll send it out in email for those of you who've, um, for everyone who's registered. And if you could just take a picture of it and upload it to that link, you can also post it on our Facebook page with the hashtag paint for NAMI. And um, we have a couple of celebrity judges who'll be looking it over and um, We'll announce winners by September 1st, and we'll be uh, announcing who the winners are and what the prizes will be. I know they'll get some um, some Nino Bunny World swag from Juan, as well as his artwork signed by him personally. Yep. And some Nami swag as well. So right now we're just doing like a little bit of highlights right on the, on the clouds and on the heart, just again, making it pop a little bit more. I wanted to just take some time to acknowledge all of our donors um, for this event. Thank you so much for contributing. That really helps us out um, to cover the expenses for the supplies. So we really appreciate you all. Yes. And hopefully we could, start, we could do more things like this. And once the world opens back up again, we could do stuff like this in person. You know, be nice to see everybody again. <laughs> So that's pretty much the, the, the painting itself. Um, you could always, like I said, we can go in there. By the end of the day, make sure you guys submit like, your pictures today by the end of the day uh, to be part of the contest. You guys have any more questions, you could always uh, like reach out to us. Um, and if you want to participate and be part of NAMI, make sure you guys check out our website, 
Um, if you guys want to volunteer, you want to learn more about resources that NAMI can provide for you, for your family members as well. There's a bunch of different programs um, that you could attend or volunteer, or get trained to be a part of as well. Um, I know we're, we're constantly working and that's the most important thing is to get the message out and the more people that get involved with us, the better. Let's see. So a little extra that we're gonna do, you don't have to do this part, but it just a little secret to make clouds look really cool. Um, so we have the clouds right here, which is basically, you know, it's the one color that we did. If you guys go in there, and you put a darker tone of that, so you mix it with gray or black, and you just do the bottom of the cloud like this, it just makes it pop a lot more and look more of like a realistic looking cloud. And it just makes it stand out even more. As you can kind of tell right there on that one. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Yeah, see, now you have more of a realistic looking cloud. And yeah. So that's pretty much the painting right there. And don't forget to sign it after you're done and we this is going to be one of the prizes we're going to be giving this one away um we're going to be adding more stuff a lot of stuff with with my brand with the t-shirts and stickers i'm going to be sending like a you know a price pack to the winner as well um you know i just want to say thank you everybody for joining us it's been a weird year but i know that all of us together you know, we could overcome it. We've overcome so much and we're still here today. So we should be thankful and grateful for that. Um, if you guys get a chance, make sure you follow me on Nino Bunny um, on Facebook or Nino Bunny on Instagram as well. Um, go check out stuff and make, if you guys would like to be part of NAMI, you know, on the website for NAMI of Southern Nevada, you guys could log in there and, you know, hopefully volunteer. Trin, anything you want to say? Yeah, I just want to say again, for those who have donated to our organization, thank you for your support. If you did donate, um, you'll be receiving an email with a free NAMI membership. And if you haven't become a NAMI member, didn't get a chance to donate, um, as Juan has said, please consider joining us because your membership, um, with your membership, you'll be gaining access to our NAMI store um, for discounts at our NAMI store, as well as our newsletter. You'll get signed up for, um, you know, events that are currently happening and it helps us to be able to put on more future events such as these. So we really appreciate everyone coming out today and spending some time for your self care. Um, so thank you. Yeah, and like I said, uh, the best thing that, that we could all do right now is, is, is focus on, on the positive things we do have in life. I know it's, it's kind of hard sometimes to see it past, you know, the negativity and all the things that are going out there, but I believe that having that empathy and love for each other and, and just respect because we never know what other people are going through. So if you guys could, you know, just take that moment and realize that, you know, sometimes somebody might be having a bad day. Um, and I know that it's very easy for, for us to, to, you know, during, especially during this time to, to, to have more of a, like a short fuse than what we normally have. So having that empathy and respect for each other and understanding that, you know, we all go through things. Um, it's probably the most important thing that we could, you know, just be a little bit kinder every day to everybody else and, and realize that it's perfectly okay to not be perfectly okay all the time. And it's okay to not be perfect all the time. So I thank you guys so much for, you know, taking the time this Saturday to spend it with us uh, and just having fun and painting because sometimes that's kind of what you need to do. You know, and again, it's just doing it for a stress really we're going to have fun and, I hope whoever gets this painting gets to enjoy it and because I don't ever hang any of my own art at my home. So you get something's got to take it. Someone asked, what's your Instagram? It's like my Instagram is at Nino Bunny. So that's N-I-N-O-B-U-N-I. -N -I. Um, and that is my main Instagram for my, for all my art, for my brand, for my apparel line that's focused on mental health advocacy. Um, 
And then I also have uh, Juan Muniz Art, which is more of my personal one. And I constantly post on that as well. Um, and then you can find me on Facebook under um, Nino Bunny World. And you can also go to my website, which is ninobunnyworld.com. And with that one, it's all the books and all the apparel and everything that has to do with mental health advocacy. So you guys feel free to follow me there. Um, I know hopefully we could do more events like these uh, as the future comes along and eventually doing some stuff live you know, with everybody. Yeah, and um, if you want to submit your artwork, I did just post the link on here as well, so you could take a photo of it and then just enter in your information so we know who how to contact you, and um, you'll be able to upload your photo on there. And I'm so glad you brought up the whole being kind, because we are partnering up with the Lady Gaga's Born This Way Foundation with their Be Kind initiative for September, from September 1st through the 21st. So check out our social media as well at NAMI SNV or NAMI Southern Nevada um, with Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Um, basically, we'll be posting each day ways that you can be kind and you can definitely submit your photo of how you're being kind to others with our challenge of the day. And we are also partnering up with the Hope Means Nevada initiative and they will be holding a Rising Hope Festival in November. So be on the lookout for that. Make sure you check out our webpage at www.namisavinvada.com Dot org. Well, you'll get an updated list of our events that are going on. You can sign up for our newsletter on there. And if you like updates straight to your phone where you don't check your emails much, you can text us, um, text NAMI Vegas to 725-215-7575. Uh, and then you'll receive updates on your phone as well. Yeah. And somebody did mention, how do you clean the brushes? Honestly, best bet, do not use soap. Just run it under the sink with warm water and wipe them off with a paper towel and, uh, and just run the water until there's no more color on it. Um, the soap tends to break up the brushes too, so you don't want to do that. Um, well, that's pretty much it. Thank you guys so much again for joining us. I uh, can't wait to see the finished pieces and you know, take care. Oh, one last question oh, yeah. that I want to ask. Yes. They, was this recorded by any chance? Because um, they missed the beginning. And yes, this was recorded, so we'll go ahead and post it onto our YouTube channel as well. Forgot to mention that, so I'll send that link out um, as a follow-up email after um, for anyone who's registered. So be on the lookout for that as well. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye.